Michael Jordan from South Central Los Angeles, the West Side. For the dime moves in the lokes, for the six foes on spokes, for the OGs that did a dime, came back around on parole. Tell us a little bit about your family background, where your parents came from. Well, my parents came from New Orleans, you know, Louisiana, but I was born and raised in South Central Los Angeles. My older brother, he was born in Louisiana. So we Creole people migrated down South Central Los Angeles, you know. What, uh, what year and why did your parents move to LA? Well, from my understanding, they moved to Los Angeles because it was better. Because, you know, they out there in the South, you know how the South was, you know, they was real racist, especially in Louisiana. You know, I think the only reason why they, my folks got by because, you know, they had straight hair and some of them look white, some of them, you know, look black, white, you know, so, because we French, Creole, so, you know, I guess they giving us passes or something. I'm about to ask you that. You got, you got people in your family that actually passed? Passed as white? Without a doubt. Maybe my uncle was white. He, no, he wasn't white, but he would say this. He'd be like, don't, don't, don't say that I'm black. He said, because I do better acting white. <laughs> for, for the audience yeah. that might not understand what passing means, explain to them what passing means in, in Creole culture. Okay, passing for white is, is like this. You know, I'm going to describe my uncle. My uncle was, uh, he was, he was light skin, you know, like white skin, you know. He had straight hair, like me, and you wouldn't know it. You know, you wouldn't know that he was black, you know, unless you knew who he really was. You know, you would think he was a white man. And that's what he did. And that's a big thing in the Creole culture, isn't it? Yeah, it is. So what year do you guys land in L.A.? Well, let's see. Since I was born at General Hospital, that was in 56. Um... Man, that was before I was born, so it had to be in. It had to be in the early fifties. Mm -hmm. mm. That my family moved there because, like I said, I was born and raised in uh, South Central Los Angeles, so I can't really, really say exactly. So I'm saying probably the early fifties. You know where they landed at when they first came? Yeah, right in, um, right in the heart of South Central because at the time it was like you know. A lot of people think that South Central Los Angeles is like uh, they have, you know, a bunch of apartments and projects, man. You got houses and palm trees. And when we, when we were living there, they were all white people that lived there. What, what, what street did they first land on when they came from Louisiana to Los Angeles? Okay, we stayed on um, Fifth Avenue between Slauson and 57, right in the middle of the block. And then from there, we moved to 59th and uh, Howes Avenue, between 59th and 60th. And from there, we moved to 6th Avenue and 60th. Yeah. Off, off subject for a minute, uh, Big Keystone used to live in that neck of the woods. Was he over there when you guys was over yeah, there? Yeah, Keystone, yeah, yeah. But Keystone stayed across the tracks, I believe. I believe he stayed across the tracks like on Cimarron, somewhere over there, you know? Yeah. Okay, so describe the neighborhood that you guys first landed in and what schools you attended. The first school I went to was uh, Angeles Mesa. That was the elementary. I was there for kindergarten, okay? But I didn't stay there long. Next thing I was at uh, 59th Street School. Me, Larry Mosley, and you know, everybody that, that grew up around there, you know? Gene Keys or Renee Keys, you know, 
All the brothers right there that ended up being 60s went to 59th Street School. Didn't Gene live across the tracks? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gene lived across the tracks. But I think Gene stayed over on, uh, I think, I don't, if I'm not mistaken, it was Cimarron, somewhere over there. He might have stayed on Haz across the tracks, you know? Uh, I don't know, but I talk about it in the book, and I told him, you know, uh, made a statement we would play and smoke weed, you know, drink beer, and, you know, he would always talk about 6 0, you know, and I used to say, man, shut up, man. I'm more 6 0 than you. I stay on 6th Avenue and 60th. We all laugh and stuff, you know. But let, let's move on a little bit to, the, um, to, to your, uh, your, your father and your mother, when you guys, when they first moved to Los Angeles. But what did they do for a living? Well, my father, he was a gangster. So what he did for a living was, at the time, you know, a lot of Creoles, they migrated, right? They had fish markets, they had businesses, and they had bookie joints. You know, gambling was a big thing, you know what I mean? So, but my mother was a very educated woman, you know, and she was like one, was one of the first black operators, if not the first black operator for uh, Pacific Bell. Yeah, she was, uh, you know, she passed for it, you know, like I said, you know, if you talked to her over the phone, you would think she was white, you know. Also, both parents were Creole. Yeah, yeah. My, well, my mother, Creole and Indian, uh, mixed up, man, Turkish. My grandmother, uh, my, my father's father was uh, French. He married a woman from Spain. His father was French and Turkish. So, you know. He, Any brothers and sisters? Yeah, 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 yeah. I have uh, I have three sisters and uh, three brothers. But my father, he had like twenty five kids. So I got a lot of brothers and sisters right now. Also, you didn't grow up with pops in the house. He was a Rolling Stone. Well, no. He when I was real little, maybe I said probably three, four years old. I remember him being there, right? But after that. I don't remember him being there. He used to drop off paper to my mom, you know, and uh, make sure that we had some things, you know, but they didn't get along. Were you aware of, of Pops' profession while you were growing up as a kid, or you learned this later? No, I learned it later, but, you know, I, we used to watch these movies, right? It was like uh, Elbert G. Robinson, Humphrey Bogart, James Cagney, you know, movies like that, them gangster movies, right? Untouchables. So my father always reminded me of that character, James Cagney. You know, so I, my mind, you know, I'm young and I'm looking at him and I'm looking at the movie and he kind of favored that, you know. So I kind of had a suspicions, but I was young and I didn't know, you know, I knew later, you know. All right, so now I want to touch on 6th six, six Avenue 60. Uh-huh. When did your family land on that block? Mm -hmm. Tell us about that neighborhood at oh, that time. At that time, okay. Uh, we moved on 6th Avenue and 60th. I was just getting ready to start Crenshaw, so that had to be... Crenshaw like, or Horseman? Crenshaw. Oh, I was going to Horseman. You're right, you're right. I was going to Horseman. You're right. I was going to Horseman, so it had to be like 68 or something. You know, and then after that, you know, graduating from there, ended up, you know, going to a uh, Cree Avenue. I, I want you to break down the demographics of 6th Avenue in 1968. Okay. Who lived in that neighborhood at that time? Okay, well, the people that lived on my block uh, was Fred Hill, Billy Hill, and and uh, just a, a lot of people. I, I don't know the exact, but I knew Fred Hill, Billy Hill, you know, because we used to be cool all the time, you know. And then it was a lot of 60s. I mean, they would just come from everywhere, you know, that just lived in the neighborhood. Yeah, but we talking about 68. 68, 1968. The before, residents. Before, oh, the residents, okay. Before, before the gang stuff, was white flight still in play or the neighborhood was fully black? Fully okay. Well, what happened then was when blacks was there, when whites was there, we were there, right? Now, when blacks start moving in, the whites start taking flight. You know, they, they rolled up out of there, you know? So, like I said, Fred Hill, Billy Hill, the Hill stayed there. Um, and so a lot of other ones, Larry Mosley, you know, Larry Mosley stayed on 6th Avenue. 6th uh, Avenue, I think 59th, 
or the other side, you know, the other side of 60th, because I was right one house right there on on the uh, west side of 60th, and he was on, I would say, the south side. So, 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 so you were there in 1968. Describe when you became conscious of gangs floating around that area. When, when did they evolve and when did you become aware of them? Well, I got aware of it when we used to go to Van Ness Park, you know, because they had these older guys. We played football and we also uh, would run track and stuff like that. And then they had guys that was older. They called them like gladiators, the businessman, Dale Vikings and uh, and some other other ones. That I don't really recall, but they were the ones that were the gang members. And then later came on, they was Van Ness you know, gang, Van Ness boys. So the neighborhood around Slauson and Crenshaw at that time didn't have a, a local established gang yet. It was still in its formation years? It was still in its formation years because when I was going to Horse Man, that's when Tookie, it was about Tookie and Raymond Washington. You know, it was East Side, West Side. But a lot of people don't know, they, they talk about, oh, the East Side Cribs. They were cribs, not crips. That was, that's who they were. You know, because I had a partner named Renee that was from Bethune. And uh, I had gotten into a problem with some dudes up there, you know, at Horse Man. So he said, come on, Mike, roll with me. So I went with him. We went to Bethune, top the fence, left out there with almost the whole school. And turned, uh, they had to close down for one day at Horse Man. So he told me, he was telling me about it. I said, man, who are these people? He said, they cribs. I said, like a baby crib? He's like, they cribs. That's what they are. East side cribs. So it kind of sounds like your gang consciousness kicked in once you hit horse man. Without a doubt. What was the gang structures membership at horse man at that time? Well, at that time it was like, I would say, since we were going to school and we weren't really in the gang, you know, we were in the gang, but it was more like like I said, it was Tookie in there, man. They would be up at the school, so you would hear about West Side Crips. You know, it was West Side Crips. Tookie, Tookie, Tookie. Raymond Washington. So then you had like, I mean, you had Cutes and and you had uh you had uh, Gary Lane, you had Mouse, you had uh, Rusty. You know, you had all them dudes, man. And they were they were they had their own thing, Magnificent Seven. What years were you at Horseman? Oh man, I had to be at Horseman at least. I would say from the year '66 to maybe '68, somewhere around there. Born in '56, so you hit junior high at what, 12 years old? No, we were like so 13 years old. Yeah, 13 years old, I think. 12, 13, yeah. Yeah, mm hmm. Did Barefoot Pookie go to Horseman with you? Yeah, I know Barefoot Pookie well. You know, I think, you no, know, Pookie, man, Pookie went to uh, 59th Street School. You know, we went, uh, it's, it's a trip, man. You know, uh, Centinella High, I mean, Centinella Park. Mm -hmm. Okay, we was up there, right? So me and Pookie was in the same class. He had his mother's uh, Camry brought to school. So we climbed out the back window and went to the park. Now, in Inglewood, you weren't supposed to be there. The white folks, you know, the police would stop you and say, what you doing here? Get your ass over there, nigga, you know, real quick, you know. So me and Pookie, we's like, they had a Tarzan rope. So we on the Tarzan rope. We hogging it, right? And so the white people came over there and started talking shit, you know. And Pookie had his mother's uh, camera, and we bonked out. Because, you know what I mean, we bonked out. Because it was nothing with white folks coming at us. But we go way back. Pookie a good dude. And this is before Pookie was a gang member. Yeah, way before Pookie, Pookie was a gang member. Lewis White. Yeah. You always drop these two names. I want to mm -hmm. know if you know. Mary Lilly and Michael Redmond. Yeah, I know Michael Redmond. Michael Redmond went to uh, fit, uh, Angeles Mesa with me. Who are these guys he always names drop? Larry Lilly. Larry, uh, Larry was a cool dude, but... And Mike, like I said, Michael Redmond, he stayed in some shit, you know, but... Larry Lilly, I think Larry... I don't know if Larry would end up being a crip or, or what, but I know the name, Larry Lilly. I know Larry, but it's been so long ago, you know? But Michael Redmond went to, uh, he went to Andrew Smasa with me, so. It, it sounds like you were kind of like 
cut in the middle because you're, you're you're going to horse man, but you're also going up the Van Ness Park. So you're getting the you're getting a piece of both worlds. Correct. Correct. So when you was at horse man and going up the Van Ness Park, was the Van Ness boys already established, or was just what was going on at Van Ness Park? Okay. Back then. So what was going on was that Swig, you know, his name is Darnese Young. They was established. They was the Van Ness gang. Okay, and they was established, and that's who, when we come to the park, you know, we was influenced by. And like a lot of guys, you know, that I said that uh, would go there, you know, like Perry Manuel. Perry Manuel used to go to the park too. Perry, uh, me and Perry's good. Perry used to go to the park. You know, everybody used to go to the park that wasn't scared because of the Van Ness gang. You know what I'm saying? But had their own mind, you know, that they wasn't part of the Van Ness gang. You know, because we was kids, we would go up there, you know, and didn't care about, you know, that, you know. So it, it sounds like the Van Ness gang was the first local gang before the Crips infiltrated the neighborhood. Before the Crips, it was Van Ness? Or were they No, nah, it, it was, it, no, nah, it was like, it was like West Side Crips. Well, there was West Side Crips and then there was the Van Ness gang so in West, the hood. So the West Side Crips were already in the 60s already yeah in the 60s already yeah and then they came later on with the 6-0 so you remember any of the names of these older west side crips in the 60s oh, man the only ones that i really could uh damn you know you wouldn't put perry Manuel. i would put perry Manuel without a doubt perry Manuel. Uh, Gene too, just Killer Gene, you know, he, Killer Gene, uh, let me see who else, man, I think, uh, uh, Michael, uh, yeah, where's Mike, he's staying in Vegas now, um, uh, Lupe, oh yeah, Lupe, yeah, Lupe, I stayed across the street from Lupe on Fifth Avenue, Lupe was there, yeah, Lupe, yeah, without a doubt, the Beasleys, yeah. How about the, uh, Chucky Madison's and all that. Without a doubt. Right well, Chucky stayed, they stayed right off 2nd Avenue and uh, 59th. So I mean, no, 2nd Avenue and 54. So explain to me, because it's kind of confusing to me. Mm -hmm. You're living on 60th and 6th Ave. Right. But you went the Van Ness Park route. Right, right. And you're living next door to the, Snoop. The Crips, and, all the way. And, and, and Billy Ray. Yeah. These are household what I'm doubt. Founder status right. of the sixties. Right. So your neighbors are are founders, right. co founders of the sixties. Mm -hmm. But you have Van Ass Park. Explain that. Okay. Well check this out. And I talk about it in my book a lot. I talk about how I used to tell my homeboys, you know, off the block, yes, go to the park, right? Because that was the only park around where you could go swimming. Olympic side pool and it's hot as a motherfucker in the summertime. So we rolling, you know, I'm rolling up there regardless, you know what I'm saying? So I, I think maybe because a lot of them wouldn't go to the park and swim, but a lot would. You know, you had uh, you had uh, a Perry Manuel and them would go, you know, you would have uh, Charlie, his brother, they go swimming, you know, uh, Big D and them was little and Lil Poochie, you know, Lil Poochie, you know, Lil Poochie. Uh, why, make peace and bless. Why would some of these kids be scared when they're not even gripping yet? They're still in that infant stage yet. So the well, still kind of open up to the whole community at that yeah. time. Yeah, but you had a lot of stuff up there. You know, it's like it was always fights, man. And somebody had a gun. Somebody had a gun. You know what I'm saying? So it was a lot of the mothers saying, don't go there. You know, my mother would tell me, boy, don't go to that park. You know, but I still go. So it wasn't because I would say they were scared because I don't think they were scared at all. I think their mothers put pressure on them, you know, and, and they didn't go. But the ones that did, like Perry Manuel, me, uh, Charlie, uh, Steve Woods, a lot of them dudes, uh, Steve and them stayed right off of uh, Slauson and Fifth Avenue. Um, and, uh, you know, so we used to go, you know, they played baseball. I played on the White Sox. You know, everybody, like I said, we grew up as kids. So, you know, we ate at each other's house. So that's where that's where that lock came in. You know what I'm saying? That's where you know that love came from. You know what I mean? You're living next door to the future founders, co-founders of the '60s. Right. You're going to Horse Man, mm -hmm. top tier West Side Crips. Mm -hmm. And you're going to Van Ness Park. Yeah. For some reason, 
that ass part got your attention more than your neighbors, more than the school that you went to? Right. Why Van Ness Park and the crew up there? Well, that's a good question. I'll tell you why. Because me, you know, growing up and seeing my father, he was a boss, right? So I had a boss mind. I'm not a follower, I'm a leader. So even though you got all these guys who are Crips, somebody gonna be a leader out of that. You know what I'm saying? And it wasn't me. So, you know, I'm the kind of guy, I'm gonna do what I do, you know? And, and if uh, somebody tried to fade me, they get a fade, they get a real fade, you know? And my father sure showed me early on, um, you know, when this dude was pulling my sister's hair, you know, my father put a 45 and busted it in the head. So I said, like, oh, I know what I know what to do now, you know, to get respect. But the only reason why I did that because I was my own person. You know what I mean? I was my own person. Some people are, you know, they 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 followers. And you got followers and leaders, not putting the followers down. You know what I'm saying? But you got somebody gotta follow and somebody gotta lead. Man, and it, it, it wasn't my it wasn't my uh it wasn't my spot to lead in that hood that I grew up at. So I got my own crew of five. Van Ness Park. Who were the big names at Van Ness Park when you were a kid? Who were the Van Ness boys? Okay. You had uh, you had uh, Swig, Darnish Young. You had uh, Reese Rat. Uh, you had Bill Davis. Uh, you had. Uh, Man, you had a lot of guys just because those guys, you had Big Daddy-O, you know, you had uh, the Davises. They was a big family, right? They stayed right there on on uh, Van Ness and um, 54th, right before we go to Arlington. And they stayed in those houses, but they turned it into the bus station, the RTD. That bus station wasn't there. They turned it to the RTD. Oh, wow. Yeah, so they was there, you know, and it was the Davises and the Youngs with the big families. And they were... Mostly the Van Ness gang. When, when, Raymond. When did the RTD bus station get built? Mm. RTD probably started getting built. If we were there in, because uh, we used to go to Juvenile Hall and shit, man, they'd had to have been in the later 60s, okay. you know, that they built it. I finished the roll call. Okay, you have uh, uh, Raymond. Raymond Davis, you know, uh, like I said, Bill Davis, you know. Uh, You're not throwing Donald Ray in there? Oh, yeah, Donald Ray without a doubt. Connie? Donald Ray, oh, yeah, Donald Ray County, yeah, Connie, yeah, I just spoke to Connie the other day. Yeah, Connie, without a doubt, because he's a young, see, but you, that's, I, I'm clarifying that now. When I say young, I know y'all don't know everybody, but yeah, Connie, Connie, yeah. So, out of all these guys you named, this, this crew, these founders of the Van Ness mm -hmm. Boys, what was special about them to make you say, I want to be part of that group and not part of the group that I grew up with? Well, I think because the guys at the park, it was more shit going on. You know what I'm saying? It was more shit going on there, man. And you had hustlers there, too. You know, you had hustlers with... Man, girls with short skirts, dudes had jewelry on, you know, fly cars. And that attra I was attracted to that shit, man. You know, I was attracted to that. And like I said, the dudes that was in my hood right in the 60s, I'd say, come on, yes, roll. Let's go to the park. But, you know, they was feeling some kind of way because they was like, this shit, we crips, you know, fuck that, you know. So that's that's that that's what attracted me. So the yeah. was, 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 was was hustling in their infant stages? Well, you had some, you had some that would, you know, but it's like this dude named Jerry, you know, Jerry Clark. He was, he was a hustler, you know what I'm saying? And uh, like a lot of older dudes, I don't know all their names, but they were hustlers. They would come to the park and they, like I said, they'd be jeweled down, you know, bras with high heels on and all that. What was, what was the hustle in the late, late 60s, early 70s in the Van Ness Park area? What were they hustling? Counterfeit money. Uh, you know, they used to get the little dudes to go, cash in them, them $20 bills, you know, go in the store, break them with a, with a note for cigarettes, you know, write, write a fake note up, go in there, you get a pack of cigarettes, you give them the 20, they bust it, you know, so we hustled a lot, you know. Do you remember the exact year that you crossed over and became a man-ass boy? 
gangster? I think, um, yeah, I would say the, the, the date, date, to narrow that date down, well, I'm going to tell you like this. When I felt that way, that was shortly after we kept going up to the park. So I would say 69, around 69 or something like that. Uh, because, you know, so that, that, that puts you like in the 13, 14-year-old range. I was 14 years old in at, juvenile at, hall. At horse man. Yeah. Was yeah. it safe to be a Van Ness boy at a Crip Central school like that? Man, listen, all them dudes that was up there, they was Crip, man. That was a Crip school. You know, but the thing about it is, this is what I learned. If you stood up for, you know, if you stood up and you was a man, people ain't going to really fuck with you. They don't want to fade you, you know? They don't really want to fade you. And I think a lot of times, and I'm not saying I'm no badass dude, but the fade I was going to put on, I don't think they really wanted that fade like that. I see in your book, you kind of mentioned also that it wasn't really clear that the Crips were enemies of the man gang in the beginning. Right. Like, gradually kicked in. Yeah. It wasn't black and white, it was like a gray area. Right, right, right. So yeah, that's like I said, man, we all grew up, you know, and when it became the 60s, you know, we all grew up in the same hood. So it's like you going, check it out, man. It's like, you know, we got five houses lined up, you know, like Fred, Billy and all them. They was friends with my sisters and them, you know? You know, Billy we went to school, he was older than me, but he went to school with uh, my sister, Adrian. So, you know, we, like I said, we grew up as kids first. So we had that love for one another. Now, some had problems, you know, and didn't get along. But, you know, I didn't see a whole lot of, man, I didn't see a whole lot of gain and, you know, point a gun at a dude that looked like me. And it, check it out. It's racism now. We got, we got these white folks, you know, calling us niggas and all this now. So I really didn't see that. You know, I was, I, if I seen some money, I'm like, okay, yes, get it. You know, when I start hustling. You know, I told everybody that, that was cool with me from 6 old. You want, you want to get money? Let's get it, man. Were you the only B&G south of Slauson? Were, were there other members along with you that lived behind enemy lines? You know what? Yeah, my homeboy Dewey. Because he stayed on Slauson in uh, 2nd Avenue. When me and Mac did history, mm -hmm. it was never really clear. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm assuming it's because of you and your residents. Right. They were saying that the B&Gs in the beginning actually crossed over the Slauson and pushed all the way to High Park once upon a time. Is that before your time? Or well, you know true? what? That that ain't true. That ain't true. Because uh, that, that's not true. Because on the other side of Slauson, the ones who ended up being 60s, it was, they was all 60. I mean, all the way back. You know what I'm saying? All the way to Florence. You got six oh, you know, so that that's what was real. I mean, I ain't know who said that, but that that's false. That's a false statement.